Welcome to the channel. My name is Samuel Barlos. Here we talk about networking and cybersecurity. Of course, before we get started, I'm going to just say any opinions expressed in the video are mine. Do not reflect my employer, uh, anybody else on the planet. So let's go ahead and get started here. So before we jump in too far into network segmentation, I want to kind of set the stage. Why are we doing this? And, you know, I'll set kind of the stage here and then we'll go into details of, of how this is applicable. But uh, there's a few different resources here. Uh, this is from Talos, Threat Intelligence. Um, you'll see there at the very top, it says median time of remediation is 100 days. So I'm just going to mark here a uh, high time to remediate. You'll see here as we go down, you know, there's a few things, you know, um, really short for larger, larger vendors. That's good. Uh, do, do, do. This is the point that I want to really spend a lot of time on here. Any organization, regardless of size, can address about one out of 10 vulnerabilities in its environment. So that's roughly 10% that we're talking about that are actually going to be able to remediate. So one out of 10 remediated. That is a scary statistic. I'm going to jump over. There's a few, um, few other articles I want to reference. This one particularly comes from EdgeScan uh, in 2022. They said the average of 60 days to patch critical vulnerabilities. So they said 100 days in general and then 60 days for critical. It's two months to patch critical vulnerability. And then I have a third article here. Uh, this one actually comes from Checkpoint. And you can see here between 70 and 80% of vulnerabilities they saw exploited in the wild were from 2017 or older in 2020. So that's three years or older than three years old CVEs being exploited in the wild. Why does this matter? And why are we talking about network segmentation? So let's say uh, 80%, uh, 70 to 80 really, but uh, phone is three years or older. Why is this so important? Why are we talking about network segmentation? So when we talk about security, there's two things we really need in order to be breached. There needs to be a vulnerability. Obviously, we're talking about vulnerabilities here. The second thing is we need exposure. So um, as we're seeing a lot more IoT devices, as we're seeing OT devices go from air gap networks to more uh, always on networks like we're used to in IT, um, we're seeing the exposure go up significantly for OT networks. So there was this, there's a significant amount of OT folks that still really don't know much about cybersecurity because they're so used to the air gapped past that they've been living and now with all this remote access, work from home, work from anywhere culture, uh, we're seeing a lot more um, moving parts with the OT because the vulnerabilities have always been there. The exposure is what changes. And so when we talk about network segmentation, we're really reducing the exposure, and I'll show you that in a minute here. But I think these statistics are terrifying, right? It takes two to three months to patch CVEs. We only really patch one out of 10 and 80% of them exploited are three years or older. So when we look at that, we go, okay, well, how do we address these CVEs? How do we make sure that we're prioritizing the right CVEs? How do we make sure we know they exist, right? We know they're out there because three years, man, if it takes you three years to patch something, uh, you're, you're definitely missing something there. So we definitely want something um, that's going to be doing our vulnerability scanning. That is definitely top of mind here, right? So there's plenty of tools out there that do that, that do vulnerability scanning. That's absolutely important. We have kind of two things we're going to look at. Uh, the CVE score, right? Is it critical? Is it high? What is it? Uh, we're also going to uh, look at exposure. So when we were doing uh, vulnerability scans when I was 
managing a network. Um, the big thing for us was we had two different scans, one for all external systems, you know, stuff in the DMZ, and then stuff internally, right? And so if anything came up in the DMZ, it was high priority, we were going to, as soon as we could, uh, get that out and get that patched because of that, again, exposure. Whereas some systems, you know, it took us a couple of weeks and, you know, uh, I, I don't think there was any vulnerability I was aware of that lasted 60 days um, that was that was critical, obviously. Maybe there were some minor ones here and there, but um, typically we patched within a couple of weeks if there was anything uh, that we saw. But in some cases, the exposure was so limited, right, like an admin interface um, that only had access to about 12 machines uh, physically. So we were able to, you know, hey, you know, we're, let's, let's wait two weeks. You know, so-and-so's on vacation. We've got some big projects that have some deadlines, whatever's happening. You know, we feel like this risk is not uh, exposed. And so we can delay that, focus on other things. Maybe there's other CVs out there, right? Log4j, like everybody kind of hits you in the face. And all of a sudden you've got to patch, you know, the vast majority of your system. So um, stuff like that, having that reduced exposure can be very, very useful. So when we talk about network segmentation, um, we've come a long way with VLANs, with micro segmentation, which we can get into as well. Um, but the big thing here is, you know, we have typically a firewall. Uh, hopefully we have a firewall going out to the internet and we'll have these different network segments, right? We'll have uh, over here, we'll have a DMZ and we'll have some servers in there. And this is great, you know, because we're segmenting off what we have out, you know, available to the public. We have, you know, maybe this is uh, production, maybe this is IoT, maybe this is camera, we'll another one here for printers, maybe we'll add another one for IT, uh, maybe we'll add a, a dev network, right, whatever we've got. And so you can see this is, you know, a little bit cumbersome. We'll probably have a VoIP network here somewhere too. VoIP. Most people are using VoIP these days. Uh, maybe we'll have server networks, multiple server networks. I'm not going to try to, you know, uh, put everything on the map here. So uh, if we're looking at more of a traditional network, we may have a layer three interface on a switch, right? Maybe a core switch, uh, maybe distributed on your other switches. If you have a relatively large environment, you may have multiple points for that layer three interface. Uh, that you have, um, but the switch is not going to do any inspection. So the reality of all this, these statistics we talked about, the the remediation uh, can be this thing called virtual patching. Now it might sound like a marketing gimmick, but a few things here that we can note is uh, we can use technologies like IPS that we would typically run on a firewall these days. A host IPS system and there's also other methods uh, that I'm not going to get into but we have some ways that we can without actually patching we can virtually patch these systems uh, we can have an IPS signature we can have host IPS we can have other technologies that will prevent that from being exploited now this is absolutely great now, the thing is typically you know this is going to be done at the network layer uh, host IPS obviously has come a long way in the last few years um, but IPS is also going to be very valuable, especially when we're talking about printers, cameras, IoT devices, the kind of things we can't rust, run a host agent on that will provide us the HIPS capability. So what we're able to do now is maybe there's a vulnerability in one of these networks, maybe multiple, right? But we can prevent that, um, that transition from maybe an IoT device to your production network, maybe a camera over to your IoT network. Right, and these little things. Now, some of this it can be provided also in a way that can limit our exposure uh, in in a kind of a different way. So, uh, one of the examples that I had in my environment is, of course, we have a management network. So maybe you manage your APs, which is that kind of stuff. Uh, we had those networks, right? We had different interfaces where we had management interfaces. For servers, etc. Well, now if I have these interfaces on my firewall instead of a layer three switch, 
Now, I, I could maintain ACLs. That's kind of a pain. It's really difficult to troubleshoot. Um, so we leveraged our firewalls. And now I can say, well, I've got an IT dedicated network. So only the IT network can go over here to this management network and go over here to these uh, server management interfaces. So now we had a layer of abstraction to say, hey, if they got into it, even our production network, our IoT network, or camera network, or printer network, or dev network, or VoIP network, whatever, they would have to get into our IT network, right? They'd have to pivot. So now they'd have to exploit a vulnerability somewhere then exploit it over here in the IT subnet, and then exploit it over here in the management subnet, right? So you start talking about these layers that the threat actor would have to get through, and it starts becoming more and more difficult. And what I found in cybersecurity is the majority of stuff, right, is just three years or older, right? People are running scripts, people are running, you know, pre-done applications that are gonna look for common vulnerabilities, just like we are on the inside, right? And they're going to be trying to exploit things that are easy, convenient. Most of the time, you know, uh, organizations aren't going to come across, you know, major political scrutiny and other things that are going to have these advanced threat actors that are really going to take that extra step. Now, if you're in that situation, absolutely 100%, you know, you should go way beyond this. You should do this, yes, but you should go way beyond this. And there's lots of other technologies that can help uh, get more advanced threats. This is kind of a core security technology um, and architecture that we should be adopting uh, if we haven't already in order to reduce that attack surface, reduce that exposure, um, in order to start building upon this and say, hey, well, now we can do things like, uh, you know, other things for more advanced threats, right? Deception, sandboxing, um, and really start layering on our security as an approach as opposed to just you know, okay, well, I've got a great EDR solution, so now I think I'm done. Now, one of the pain points with this is going to be, okay, well, I'm putting all this extra strain on my firewall. It's giving me throughput issues. You know, it wasn't sized for this. We were sized for our internet throughput. Um, so we may want to be selective on how we do this. What we can do is we can be selective, right? IoT devices are probably all going to go to the internet. You know, maybe we have cloud printing services. So if they're going through the internet anyway, might as well, right? There's no really downside there. Um, other things, you know, uh, cameras typically have a lot of traffic, um, but maybe other things like management interfaces aren't going to have a ton of traffic. And so it's not going to have a huge impact on the firewall. And maybe we can start picking those off and, and making those uh, making those decisions in order to, you know, get the most security we can for what we have today and then start looking to plan towards the future now of course you can do all of this and send this to the firewall um, a core firewall you can also do internal segmentation firewalls so when i was running my own network uh, i was over the infrastructure department uh, we had multiple firewalls we had firewalls all over the place to have local segmentation and then you know we had firewalls that they went into if they wanted to get back to core sites Right, so having that multi-layered approach again was very, very helpful in order to keep those segments small. The other thing we can do is micro-segmentation. And effectively, we're taking all these networks and then we're segmenting them within themselves. So if we're, say, the IoT network, the IoT devices can't directly talk to each other. They have to go through the firewall. The firewall can then have rules um, so that uh, devices can talk to each other if they need to. But we have to manage a firewall rule, firewall policy, that's going to explicitly allow that. So again, you know, it does provide some strain on the firewall in order to produce that bandwidth because uh, effectively what we're doing is we're proxy ARPing uh, up into the firewall, at least uh, from Fortinet's perspective, the one I'm familiar with. Um, but there's other technologies where, you know, hey, even if we have multiple sites, we can have an overlay technology that's going to send everything to the firewall. The firewall is going to do the routing uh, and then route it back uh, going through that firewall rule again. So uh, hopefully that's been helpful, kind of going over some vulnerabilities, why we would look at network segmentation, why need, we need to look at, you know, vulnerability scanning, and there's other technologies that we should be looking at as well. Um, you know, hey, if we can only patch one out of 10, is there a more efficient way we can patch? Or uh, is there a way that we can use vulnerability scanning to find out, okay, well, what is our exposure? What's the vulnerability? And what's the CVE level? Go through all that and be able to be efficient with our time 
and then look at other things like virtual patching, look at network segmentation and say, hey, can we do this or can we at least get on a path to do some of this in order to really uh, improve our security posture? So I'd like to thank you for viewing and I'll see you next time.